Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is another March Mystery Madness video. Before we get into the content of this video, I wanted to show you the book that I found that matched the last criteria in my marvelous and magnificent March Mystery Madness M&M Manuscript Matchup Game. First of all, can I just say Thanks everyone for playing along. It has been so much fun to read your comments and to see the books that you have um, that you have found. And some of them have been like some of your comments have been super funny. So um, I'm so glad that you're playing along and that you're enjoying this game. And the book that I found um, that matched the last criteria, which was to a book set in Europe with a professional detective. So I'm going to go with The Human Flies by Hans Olaf Lalun. This is um, uh, at actually a book on my TBR for this month. I'm hoping to read it this month. This is set in Oslo in 1968, and the, the main character is ambitious young detective inspector Colburn Christensen, known as K2. And so I am just super excited about this. This has been translated by from the Norwegian by Carrie Dixon, and uh, the tagline on, on the front says they were being killed off one by one. So yeah, super exciting. So uh, stay tuned to the end of the video where we will play the next round of our M&M Manuscript Matchup game. Now, as I'm sure many of you are aware, there are tons of readathons going on in the month of March here on Booktube. I don't know what it is about the month of March, but everything happens during March. And one of those fantastic readathons is uh, Middle Grade March. And Middle Grade March is being hosted by Krista from Books and Jams. Um, Katie from Life Between Words, and I think that there's one more, um, but I can't remember. I'm going to put the um, information, the announcement video from Krista in the description box below. So if you haven't heard of Middle Grade March, check it out. It's really fun. It's all about uh, reading middle grade books. Now, I don't read middle grade books anymore, but when I was in middle grade, I definitely read books. And so I thought it would be fun to do a bit of a mashup here for you today and tell you about the mysteries that I enjoyed when I was in middle grade. Now I'm going to be, um, I'm not entirely sure what middle grade here is because we, I mean, when I went to school it wasn't middle grade, but um, it wasn't called middle grade. So I'm just going to, I'm thinking that it's like grade five, six, and seven, and I could be completely off. But that's what I was thinking of when I was trying to remember what I was reading. And I thought it was really fun to go back and remember because it proves that I am a lifelong mystery reader. I have always loved mysteries. Those I gravitated to those when I was in middle grade myself. Um, and as you'll discover, I come to my love of historical mysteries honestly. And there was a series of historical mysteries that I absolutely adored when I was in middle grade. So let's just dive straight in. I loved Nancy Drew and that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody but I did I adored Nancy Drew I thought she was so cool and to have a teenager investigating mysteries was like the best thing ever and I actually remember this book I'm gonna put the picture here the secret of the old clock is the very first uh, Nancy Drew. These were written by Carolyn Keene and Carolyn Keene is kind of the name of, um, it's like the pseudonym that any, any author who ended up writing Nancy Drew took on that pseudonym. Um, and this mystery, The Secret of the Old Clock, was originally written in 1930 and that picture that I showed, that's the original um, cover and that's the cover I remember. I actually remember that book um, I loved it. I mean, it was it was about a missing will hidden in a family clock. I mean, awesome, right? <laughs> so yeah, I just adored Nancy Drew and I devoured them. I also loved the Hardy Boys. Um, again, just because it was more mysteries, I thought it was cool because they were teenagers. Again, 
Um, so the Hardy Boys series was written by Franklin W. Dixon, and I'm fairly certain it's the same situation with uh, Carolyn Keene, that that's a pseudonym and multiple authors wrote the books. But Frank and Joe Hardy were brothers uh, who ended up investigating mysteries, and I will admit I had a bit of a crush on Joe Hardy. Um, I think I can safely confess that Joe Hardy was probably my first bookish crush. <laughs> but yeah, so I loved Nancy Drew and I loved the Hardy Boys. But I also really loved Trixie Belden. And I don't know if Trixie Belden gets talked about very much anymore. But Trixie Belden, the first book was written in 1948. Um, Julie Campbell, she wrote Trixie Belden books between 1948 and 1958, and then the series was picked up by Catherine Kenny, and she wrote from 61 to 86. And I gobbled up the Trixie Belden books. I loved them so much. So she lived on a farm. She lived on Crabapple Farm just outside of Sleepyside, New York. Now, I forgive her for living on a farm because she was so awesome. So she had a best friend called Honey Wheeler, and they hoped to one day start the Belden Wheeler Detective Agency, which I thought was the coolest thing ever. In the meantime, they got lots of practice in solving all kinds of exciting mysteries that took place around their hometown. And I was always that type of kid that wished I could get myself involved in my very own mystery. Honestly, I was. And, uh, and so, I mean, frankly, these books are probably heavily to blame for a situation I, I got myself into. I would say I was probably in grade six, so middle grade. I lived in a very small town in Alberta. Bashaw had 800 people. And so it was the kind of small town where, and at the time, this was the 80s, and um, the, you know, the kids, we ran wild and parents parented kind of whoever's kids were around sort of thing. Everybody looked out for everybody else. Well, there was a story going around the school about a, a house in the town that had a skeleton in it. And of course, we believed that this was true. We believed that there was totally a skeleton in this house. And so we decided one day that we were going to go and find this skeleton. So me and my best friend at the time, Sandy, uh, decided we were going to go. And then of course my big brother, Jonathan, who's like a year older than me, he decided he had to come along to protect us. And I'm sure that there was a couple other kids too. Uh, so we headed off to this house. What we didn't know at the time, because we were just kids, was that like someone owned this house and I'm pretty sure someone was living there, maybe, but the house was in a big mess. Anyway, so we had this story in our heads that there was a skeleton in this house and we psyched ourselves up and we went there. And we headed up the steps of the porch and Jonathan, you know, he went first because he was there to protect everybody, you know, grade seven Jonathan. And uh, he kind of opened up the, the screen door and it came right off of its hinges and we were all like, oh! and so we went in and in the porch, the very first thing we see are drops of blood on the floor and they led directly to a big hatch in the floor that went down into the cellar. and. You know, of course, we were all like, who's going to open that? That's where the skeleton is. Look at the blood on the floor. And so everybody is freaking out. Meanwhile, I look up and on the shelves in the porch, I can see cans of paint. And it's pretty obvious that it's drops of red paint on the floor. <laughs> Anyway, so we open up the hatch and head down the stairs into the basement. Well, the basement was covered in garbage. There was garbage all over the floor. It was mostly like paper and, st and newspaper and stuff. And so nobody wanted to go down there, although we were fairly sure that there, the skeleton was probably down there, but we had freaked ourselves out too much. So then we start sneaking around the house looking for, for this skeleton. And um, in all honesty, we got in so much trouble when our parents found out what we had done. 
And of course, we never found a skeleton in the house. Anyways, um, I also loved, there was a series of books called the Mandy series, and I adored that series. They, it was written by Lois Gladys Leppard, and the first one was written in 1983, Mandy and the Secret Tunnel. And this one was historical and mystery, and um, I loved it so much. So these were mystery adventures set in turn of the century North Carolina, and I liked, I just loved those so much. I read a whole bunch of those. Um, the first 10 or so probably, because after that I was, you know, um, I felt like I, by that point, gotten too old to, to read any more Mandy, but the ones that I read when I was in middle grade, I really, really liked those ones. And then the last, the last thing that I can remember that I, that I loved to read when I was in middle grade was the Choose Your Own Adventure books. I loved those books so much. And so they, not all of them were mysteries, but some of them were. And it, um, I don't know uh, who wrote them. I think they were written by many different people, but it was a series of books put out. And um, you would read and you would get to a certain point where the story would cut off and you as the reader had to choose what would happen next. And you were, you were given a short list of choices. If you want the characters to do this, turn to this page. If you want them to do that, turn to that page. And I loved it so much. I loved choosing how the story went. And I would often go back and then read it again, making different choices. Um, yeah, I loved those so much. So those were the mysteries that I loved when I was in middle grade. Did, did you read mysteries when you were in middle grade? I would love to hear about the mysteries that you liked to read when you were in middle grade. And before we leave, we better do our next round of our M&M manuscript matchup. So I've got my m &Ms. I'm giving them a shake. And here we go, green. So that gives us the time period. Mm. Green again, so... Uh, We've got a no repeat. Um, although actually in this case, I could do it because if we do no repeats all the time, then I would never get this category. So let's go for it because it gives us the time period, but then green gives us 1950 to 1980. So the no repeat rule, actually, you could really just do it for the first and the third, the third ones. So yeah, so we are going to do 1950 to 1980, and orange. Orange gives us detective, and blue. Blue gives us professional. So we are looking for a mystery with a professional detective written or set between 1950 and 1980. So I can't wait to see what you find that matches those criteria and I will see you for another video soon. Bye.